So here we have homework number one from 3.4. Now this one looks a little bit different. Notice there's something under the variable there. So I'm just gonna make a note Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what that would mean here is I could write that as r equals one over 873.36 times the t and then minus the 2.15. And is do that because I just want to identify that this fraction is the slope. And so I could state what it means just by figuring out what the heck R is and then what T is. So let's see, which of the following represents, we've got R, percent of Americans are retired. So this is percent retired. And T is the year. So looking at this fraction, the, the um, dependent variable is always the numerator. So that would be one percent or plus one percent retired. And this would be years gone by, so number of years. So this slope tells me that the percent of people in the US increases, that retire increases by one percent every 873.6, three, six years. Whoa, okay, that's what it says. Um, and then this negative, what does that mean? So let's see, the, that's the y-intercept. Sometimes y-intercepts are needed to get things to be in the right spot, but they, they might not be meaningful physically. So remember the y-intercept is a point zero B. So ours would be the point zero negative 2.15. And T is the actual year like 2020 or 2021, 2022, 2025. This would be the year zero. What, what's the year zero? Well, we do dates in like BC and AD. So this would be right in the switch. So 2021 years ago, the percent of Americans retired was negative 2.15. Okay, so that makes no sense on many levels, but it's needed to get the correct numbers for years like T equals 2021, for example. I'm supposed to be a 2021. So the slope is meaningful. The output R is meaningful here, but the y-intercept, although it's needed to make the equation work right, is does not have a valid interpretation. It's like, ah, uh, that's kind of crazy talk. America didn't exist 2,021 years ago. Okay. So that happens sometimes in these equations. The slope will always be meaningful. All right, anyway, what do we got here? Um, which of the following representations depict a linear model? All right, so this one's definitely a linear model, long story short, because I can have a, I found that there is a slope and a y-intercept. Uh, this is a linear model. What's my justification? There is a constant rate of change. Yeah, there is. Uh, the graph is a line, okay. The formula can be written in the, form y equals mx plus b. I think most of those are good. I guess I'm gonna go with the formula but can, can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. That's what I did in my notebook there. Cool. Um, but really, I mean, if we look at the graph here too, uh, the graph is a line, that's true too. And I did identify a slope. So there is a constant rate of change. We can see that in the picture too. So the first three answers should work. Last one, this is definitely a line. All right, I'm gonna go with my first pick there. All right, how about this one down here? P equals 40 plus 2L, where P is the perimeter and L is the length. Okay, so let's see. That kind of looks like a Y equals MX plus B, except that B and the MX are backwards, but that's okay. So I'm gonna say, yeah, it's a linear model. And let's see, how can I justify this? Well, I would say it can be written in that form. That's all they give me. Okay, the graph for breaking distance versus speed is given below. 
that doesn't line up. Okay, so this is not linear. There is not a constant rate of change. Graph is not a line. Graph is not a line. Pretty clear. Ooh, this one's a bit harder. I need to write this down. Okay, screen shots of that table. So a couple ways to do this one. I could try to graph those points. That's one way to do it. Or I could think about the idea of, of rise and run to see what happens. So I'm going to pick on the idea of rise and run. So if I, if I move through time, that's my run. And if I move through distance, that's my rise. So tables like this are always going to be the independent variable followed by the dependent variable. That is, these are my x's and these are my y's. Okay, so that's the standard way we make the tables. X's go first, Y's go second. Independent first, dependent second. So when I do something like say, hey, to go from zero to two, that's a plus two increase from two to four, that's a plus two increase and plus four to two, four to six, that's a plus two increase. These numbers right here are runs. So I'm moving X direction. If I look at the changes here to get from 3.5 to 13.5, that would be a plus 10. Sometimes I have to whip out my calculator to figure that out. Hey, look at that, another plus 10 and another plus 10. So no matter which pair of points I pick, I'm getting a rise of 10 and a run of two if I pick ones next to each other. So it looks like this one has a slope of 10 over two or five, and it's always the same. So that right there makes this linear. Slope is a rate of change. Since I found the rate of change was the same each time, then that means I have a constant rate of change. So that is the, ooh, trying to draw a line underneath here and go well. So this has a constant rate of change from this table. And if I were to plot those points, I should see that's the case too. I'm not gonna worry about plotting them right now. Oh. Actually, I wanna show you a cute spreadsheet trick. Check this out. If I highlight that table, and when we highlight it, we wanna be careful. Start just at the beginning of T for time and just at the 33.5, I'm gonna do control C for copy. And then I can go into my spreadsheet here, bring up a new tab, control V as in Victor to paste, and it pops it in there. Even better, I can say, hey, Google Sheets, will you give me a cute graph for this? And it should try to plot the point. So let's see, it gave me a line chart. I would like a, what's called a scatter plot. And I would like to zoom out a little bit. All right, so there is the computer plotting. Come on, get out of the way. There we go, those points for me. And they look like they line up pretty good. There is a way to get it to draw a line through the points. I'll go over that next week. But spreadsheet, kind of cute, quick way to do that. All right, let's try another problem. <laughs> 